Got to talk about this one for a minute before we dive right in. Okay, there's a plethora of ways to do this. When you set up an environment, you might have local dev, you might have development that's shared, like out on servers that multiple developers use, and then you may have something like UAT, which is user acceptance testing, <coughs> and other options. I don't know, a lot of, some companies have multitude of tiers uh, between basically local development and something shipped to production, right? Production being the, the thing that's publicly available for the customers that are going to use it. And when I say publicly available, whatever it is that's public to the customers or the clients of that system. So if it's an internal system, like an internal enterprise system, it, that would just mean a privately but public within the company available system to the clients. So that's, that's production. And just to add that clarity around the different environments, it's important. So basically, local development, local, just on the machine, having your database, your Hasura API, we'll cover that in just a minute. And then getting that out to the, uh, a secondary environment, like a shared development environment. We'll talk about that. And then we'll talk about how to point things at those environments here. I'm going to start working through here in just a minute one of the environments that I already have previously set up that has just local dev and then I have basically a dev slash test slash production server out in um, Azure that's out there. And you can see how I've broken it out and added a few little scripts to make it easier for me to get connected to each of the specific databases and get them set up for dev or whatever it is that I'm working on at a particular point in time. I have one, one, there's actually two environments, two major key projects in this. This is kind of a sort of a mono repo around a something as a service application. There's root and then there's new accounts. New accounts would be like the applications that would be deployed in that as a service solution. In root here, I have Hasura and then I have a directory set up specifically to local dev, just local dev. I have my Docker compose. I have a down script and I have an up script. And even in the local environment, I've set up to use Terraform, for example, to create my initial database. The reason being is in my Docker Compose, I'm using Hasura V2, Alpha 6. But then down here, you'll see I have a connection string to a database called Control, okay? So I wanted to be able to connect to that database, but that database per the Docker Compose doesn't exist. And building a script to like go out and automatically create a database is kind of tricky. Um, you can't really do that with PSQL just from the command line. You gotta do some hacky stuff. But one easy solution is to use Terraform to connect to Postgres and create a database because Terraform will enable you to do that. Uh, you get a provider. You connect to Postgres just like this. I have my environment variables for username and password, so I'm not leaking those into the repo. Then I have my Postgres database right here that I want to uh, connect to. That's the, that's, or I mean, I want to create. This is the server. This is the database that'll be created, right? Um, and I pass in the database name too in case I want to change the name per the script or something. Okay, and then it, it creates the database. Ah. My scroll is all out of whack today. Um, and there's my variables. So it's just, it's just this much stuff. And that creates the Postgres database for me. Now, if we go look at the script where I do this, this is my local development environment. But I do a Terraform init, so it connects, it gets that provider for Postgres. Then, um, it, at, well, first I do the Docker Compose up dash D. <clears throat> Now, once that's launched, Hasura attempts to connect to that database that doesn't exist yet. But Terraform init and Terraform apply happen pretty quick, especially once the Terraform init has happened once already, because it just puts the dot Terraform directory there and gives me the ability to connect to the database. So it makes that database in about one or two seconds. 
So within one or two seconds, the database exists for Hasura to connect to. So now I have a custom database. Okay, so that's again, just local development. And then I do a Hasura migrate apply, admin secret, and it applies all the migrations, right? Now I do need here to add for V2, or if you go multi-database or multi-database in V2, uh, you need to add the database. So I need to make some changes to this one so it adds it to the correct database. But right now I only have one database in there. So this seems to work at this point. So then metadata apply, which is just for the single Hasura server, so no database to point to. Then seeds, that's gonna be, need to be pointed at a database. And then finally it launches the console. So this is local dev, dev environment. That console comes up, the console's ready to be used to make any changes or whatever I need to do in development. Now in the shared development environment, similar stuff is going on, except the Terraform actually builds out an entire server. Okay, so here's, here's my server, I call it Union Station. Okay, that's the Postgres server. Pass in the username and password, same way, via environment variable. Then I create a metadata database, a control database. I add a firewall rule because this is out there and I need to connect between the Postgres service in Azure to the container service. And then last but not least, the container group and the container in the group right here. And I pass in the port too, just so that I can specifically say if I want 8080 or something else for the port. And then my environment variables, etc. So Terraform does that for me, that environment set up. And then I have scripts to also start and stop this. So it's a little bit more, uh, there's a little bit more to this script than the other one. For instance, it checks whether the database username and password environment variables are set. So whether I'm launching this here, or if I use a Bastion server to launch the environment and make that environment ready via a service provider or something, then the script knows to check for that stuff and stop if it, if it doesn't have those key pieces of information. So it goes through, and then I also have a file that does very specific uh, mutations on the config.yaml. All it does really though, I say very specific, it swaps out the local host and gives it the derived URI that the cloud provider would give me for my Hasura instance. Once it does that, it puts, puts that in the config.yaml file. So then I can go into the Hasura directory and apply the migrate the metadata, et cetera, just like I would from local development. So that's the way I do that to manage my development environment that's local and my development environment that is out on a server somewhere. Two, two very specific things, but a lot of little helpers in there to figure out how to do this or that or how to point something at, at something or not. So that is the basis of how I divide up environments and how I break it out in my project. Again, there's a million ways to do this. I'm just showing you one example. Uh, you, could, you could pick a completely different strategy. Um, and depending on how the team works, what kind of tool stack you're using, whether you do Hasura migrations or you do your own migrations with some other tool like Connects or something like that, that would be great. Whatever it is you wanna do, if you are setting up your flow and have other minute questions or want more suggestions, I'm happy to brainstorm with you. So bounce on the show here or into Discord and we'll talk about it some more. But I just wanted to provide a very specific breakout of how I personally break out my dev versus lo local dev versus shared dev, et cetera. And the shared dev would, is basically a slightly less secure version of what would be production. In production, I would make sure to give it an admin secret. I'd have JWT tokens and such implemented already. I'd make sure that there is a clear DMZ and also a clear IP in the firewall and other specifics between the connection there. Uh, so that, you know, the database and even the Hasura API, depending on its need to be public or not, would be 
broken away and separated and behind something where the general public wouldn't be getting to that. They'd be getting to my specific web page, or if they do need access to the API endpoint, then they would have access to that. So a few things to think about in that regard. Anyway, I hope that answers that question.